ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय उत्तम पुरुषस्वन्य Besides these two, there is the greatest living personality, the supreme soul, the imperishable Lord Himself, who has entered the three worlds and is maintaining them. Krishna says besides these two so this is clearly a positive to the previous verse which I'll therefore read dravi mo purusho loke kshars chakshara evacha kshars sarvani bhutani kutas tok shara uchate there are two classes of beings the fallible and the infallible in the material world every living entity is fallible and in the spiritual world every living entity is called infallible so this verse that we just read today beginning with the word uttamaha uttama purushaha swamyaha he is the best or the supreme person the person above all others and he is anya he is different to the two classes of beings who have been described previously that means those who are are living in the material world and those who are living in the spiritual world so these are two classes of the beings and superior to them is the paramatma the supreme personality of god then so krishna is also atma and he is paramatma and ordinary atma is jivatma Jivatmas are part and parcel of the supreme personality of Godhead. Namai Vamsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Ha. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has already explained that all living beings are my fragmented parts and parcels. And in the next verse, which comes after this, this is text seventeen we're reading today. Uh, Krishna goes on to explain Yasmaksha Matito Ham Akshara the Pichotamaha Atosmi Loke Vedecha Patita Purushotamaha. Because I am transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible, and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that supreme person. So Krishna is explaining that there is a personality who is superior to all others. He is called Paramatma, and that is me, actually, Krishna is saying. So he is explaining his position, and then directly equating himself with it. Sometimes people ask, why is it that Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita he speaks about the super soul as if it's someone else? He speaks in the third person. This is an example. In the verse we read today, there are many others: Ishvara Sarva Bhuta Nam Vidyeshya Juna Tishtati Brahma Yam Sarva Bhuta Ni Yam Draru Dhani Maya. Krishna tells Arjuna that the Supreme Lord Ishvara, the word is being used, Ishvara, He is situated in everyone's heart and is directing the wanderings of all living beings. So why does he say Ishvara? Why doesn't he just say me? Uh, I consider this and. I came up with the understanding that it's actually that may be done. It's not only Krishna does that; others may also do that. If someone, the teacher in the class, may say to the children, "Listen to me," or he may also say, "You should listen to your teacher. He is the teacher." But he may say, "You should listen to your teacher." So listen to me. That is a direct order. But if he says you should listen to your teacher, he's referring to himself. But he's not just saying you follow me. But he's saying why you should follow me, not because of me, but because of my position. So Krishna does the same thing. He explains what is his position, and therefore we understand why we should follow Krishna. If 
we, if Krishna simply says, well, do what I say, then uh, certain kinds of persons, of course those who are devotees, they will agree. But those who are not devotees, and after all Bhagavad Gita is spoken to make people devotees, it is the ostensible reason for Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita is to convince Arjuna to fight. But that is, that is the reason, but there's a much bigger reason than that. It's a big enough reason. But it has a much broader scope. Bhagavad Gita, actually Arjuna is already a devotee. Krishna tells Arjuna, Mandana Bhagavad Bhakto, Madhyaji Mangnamaskuru. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, bow down to me. But Arjuna's something in the mic? You seem to be very interested in the microphone. The Arjuna's already doing that. He's already thinking of Krishna, he's already worshipping Krishna, he's already bowing down to Krishna. He's, al he's already Krishna's devotee. So actually Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to convince others to be Krishna's devotee. Because there are others who are not inclined to be Krishna's devotee. There are others who, just like if Krishna tells Arjuna, you do it. Even if Krishna had not spoken the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna could have just told Arjuna, just given him one slap in the face, and told, hey, come on, get up, fight. I'm telling you. And he would have said, yes, okay. Because he's a devotee. But it was the arrangement of Krishna's yoga maya potency that Bhagavad Gita begins with the chapter that is entitled, what's the name of the first chapter? Arjuna? Vishada Yoga. Arjuna is feeling great distress. So, Krishna doesn't want his devotees to be in distress, but this was arranged so that uh, the Bhagavad Gita could be spoken to Arjuna who was suffering from what he himself described as Karapanya Dosh. I've become a rascal. I've become a fool. My crippled minded. But actually Bhagavad Gita was spoken to convince others who are not like Arjuna to surrender to Krishna. And there are others, you see, here he's convincing. I'm God, so you should surrender to me. There are others, there are some like Duryodhana, who even if Krishna tries to convince that he's God, he won't be convinced. Just like Duryodhana, Krishna, one of his famous names is Pandavadut, one of the Divya Deshams you'll find in Tamil Nadu. Is, uh, in there the Lord is called Pandavadut. And he was sent as the messenger of Yudhishthir, who is Pandava, son of Pandu, to try to sue for peace with the Kauravas. And uh, Duryodhana, he didn't want to listen, as usual. He doesn't want to listen to anyone unless they're praising him. This is the sign of a fool. Foolish people like to be praised. But if anyone gives them good advice, they don't like to listen. If, it's, if the good advice is not what they like to hear, they don't like to listen. Which is why there are so many bogus gurus in the world today. They simply praise, oh yes, yes, you are very nice. But they don't give any actual instruction. Guru should tell you are a rascal. That is the duty of a guru. But instead they say, oh, you are very nice. Oh, this is a very good guru. He understands me well. So I don't actually need a guru. Just out of my leela, I'm accepting him. So uh, Duryodhana, he just liked to listen to praise and he didn't like to hear Krishna telling him not to, why I shouldn't fight. I want to fight. I want to kill the Pandavas. Let's have a fight. Great. We are out, we have outnumbered them. We've got all the, we've got all the great fighters on our side. I want to fight. I want to finish those people off. I've been trying in so many ways and we tried by, we tried to kill the Pandavas. We tried to kill Bhim first of all by, Poisoning him, throwing him in the river in an unconscious state, and we we we, we wanted to burn them alive in the house of lack, and we, we sent them to the jungle where we were hoping that they would get killed by some rakshasas or whatever. We did everything we could, and they're still alive. So let's just, in the meantime, we built up our forces 
So let's get it out in a big fight and definitely we're going to defeat these. We'll, we'll defeat the Pandavas. And Krishna said, no, you're not going to defeat them. You have more, bigger armies, you may have the best fighters, but they've got me and I'm God. So you can't defeat. But Duryodhana, he wasn't willing to listen. So Krishna at that time showed him some uh, display of his opulences. Krishna showed him the Vishwarupa. And they are, ah, it's just some magic trick, that's all. We're not afraid of you. What can you do with such a person? Balaram himself, that uh, he, who is, Balaram is known as Duryodhana Guru. It's one of the names of Balaram. He's the Guru of Duryodhana for club fighting. So he had some, some kind of sympathy for Duryodhana. But uh, after Samba, the son of Krishna, was surrounded by all the great fighters of the Kauravas, because he stole away uh, Lakshmana, who is the daughter of Duryodhana. One of Krishna's queens is also called Lakshmana, there's another one. So in the Swayamba, he just took her away by force. So the great heroes of the Kaurava, actually the including Arjuna and everyone at that time. They, they forcibly captured Samba. So Balaram came and said, you know, uh, you shouldn't do this. You know, I'm your friend and everything, but this uh, son, he's Krishna's son, so you shouldn't mess around with him. So anyway, you know, just release him and everything will be okay. And then the... Uh, Kaurava said, what is this, this Yadu dynasty? We are, we are actually the kings here. We're in charge. And this Yadu dynasty, they're simply, uh, we allow them to use the royal insignia like elephants and, and chamar and all this kind of thing. We allow them to, but uh, actually we're in charge of the world and, and even the demigods are afraid of us. So what, what is this Yadu dynasty? Who is this Balaram? So then uh, Balaram, he got angry and he said that, you know, these people are so stupid. Now they think that they're in charge, but they don't know who Krishna is. So for such people, the only, uh, the only manner of dealing with them is with a stick. There's what, what else do you do with it? So such people are simply rascals. And rascals, they just need a stick, that's all. There's, there's no arguing with such people. So Bhagavad Gita wasn't spoken for Duryodhana. He was also present there. But such a person as Duryodhana, even with a stick, even if you beat him on the head, he'll rather be beaten on the head. He'll, he'll suffer the beating on the head rather than admit that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. That is the nature of a rascal. So, uh, Bhagavad Gita wasn't spoken for Duryodhana, and it wasn't spoken so much for Arjuna as it was spoken for us. Bhagavad Gita is spoken especially for people who don't know whether they should be with the Pandavas or whether they should be with the Kauravas. Where do we stand? Are we with, uh, are we with the godly or the ungodly? In the beginning of the 16th chapter of Gita, Krishna explains there are two kinds of people. The, most of the chapter he devotes to explaining the demo, demoniac kind. So he begins with explaining the godly people, godly nature. Abhayam sattva samshudhya jnana yogi vedasthiti dana dhamas chayogyascha swadhyaya stapa arjava ahimsa So he goes on and he explains that these good qualities such as fearlessness, purification of one's existence, uh, being situated in transcendental knowledge, uh, charity, self-control, performing sacrifices, studying the scriptures, uh, austerities, straightforward behavior. These are all godly qualities. And on the other side, dambho dharpo vimanas chakro dhaparu shaneva chanyana chabhijata on the other side, there are the demoniac persons 
whose very nature is they are arrogant, proud, conceited. They don't like to listen to anybody. They think, I know everything. Very harsh. They don't deal with people. They, they always deal with people very roughly. By nature, angry, like a snake. And uh, ignorant of the proper purpose of life. Ajnanam chavira. So, uh, these are the symptoms of demoniac people. So, most people, they're neither very godly, nor by nature very demoniac. But they're somewhere in between. And we see that just like if you drive through Chennai on Sunday morning, which I just did. You'll see so many churches. And the preaching is going on. Hallelujah! Loud speaking. So people may have some godly inclination. So they'll be attending the church because we don't have our Hare Krishna temple yet. We should be having. So they'll be attending the church and then by the grace of the Christian church, not by the grace of Jesus, but by the grace of the Christian church, they'll go home and have chicken on Sunday, which is not godly and is not the message of Jesus because Jesus didn't eat chickens. They have invented some myths that Jesus was a meat eater, but we don't believe it. And there's good, even from the scholastic point of view, there's very good evidence to suggest that Jesus wasn't a meat eater and that the Bible has been twisted to show him as a meat eater. So anyway, I'm just giving the example that uh, people, they, they're somewhere in between. There's some godly inclination. Someone's talking about God and Jesus and hallelujah. So people have some attraction. But on the other hand, they have no clear idea of what is religion, so they think that, uh, yes, we'll eat chicken. And where I come from, Sunday, anyway, I won't say what we used to eat on Sunday. It's not proper to speak these things in this particular time, place, and circumstance. So people, they have no clear idea. The Bhagavad Gita is spoken to give a clear idea to delineate between what is the fact, what is the truth, what is reality, and what is not. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna addresses various misconceptions. For instance, demigod worship. There are many people who are, we could say, superficially pious, who worship different demigods. And we see that in Hindu society, that Hindus in general, they very easily accept someone as a god. Any rascal can come along and say, I am Adya Parashakti or something like this even though he's a man. And people are so stupid that they believe it. Or, I am Kalki. One day I was sitting in the LIC office and then I just remembered, oh, I'm Kalki Avatar. <laughs> and then I got chased out of Tamil Nadu, so I ran away to Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, people are so stupid that they believe these things. That tendency to worship that is good, but we should know who to worship. If we don't worship who is actually worshipable, then our worship will cause us to go not upwards, but to go to an inauspicious destination. This Krishna mentions in Bhagavad Gita, Yanti Deva Vrata Devanti, Trim Yanti Putri Vrataha, Bhutani Yanti. If you worship the Pitris, you go to Pitri Loka, which is actually down, not up. If you worship the Devas, you go to Devaloka. If you worship the ghosts, you become a ghost. Watch out, there's a lot of Buddha worship going on in Tamil Nadu. Isn't that so much? In the villages, especially, so much. They don't say Bhut, they say Bhut. In, in Tamil, how do you say it? Buddha, 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 something like that. Buddha means fool in Hindi. 
So it's almost the same word. So uh, people they have a tendency to worship, but if we don't place our worship in the right place, then uh, you don't actually get benefit. Just the opposite. So here Krishna is uh, delineating what is the fact. There's another about demigod worship, Krishna. Very clearly says, Antavatu Palanteja, Tadbhavati Alpameda. And those who worship demigods, they only get temporary results from doing so. Therefore, they're foolish. Because the same people think, well, we are worshipping demigods, worshipping Krishna, worshipping Buddha, or worshipping uh, Amma. There's Kerala, there's Kerala Amma and Tamil Amma also. <laughs> One's a political leader and the other's a fisherwoman. So it's all the same. Because it looks the same. You see, you put a garland, you offer some dhub and some deep, and you say some mantras, it's all the same. So if you worship Krishna or this Amma or that Amma or Adya Para Shakti, who's come in a male form at the present time, or or even the bona fide Vedic worship. Bona fide means it's mentioned in the Vedic scriptures of Lord Shiva or various demigods. That it's all the same because it appears to be the same. But no, you get a different result from doing a different kind of worship. Because if you worship the devas, you go to the devas. You go to their where they're going. You go you go to the planets of the devas. If you worship Krishna, you go to Krishna. If you worship the Buddhas, you go to the Buddha, the ghosts. Ah, uh, if you worship this uh, bogus avatars, my God, you run away. Hare Krishna. I say these uh, bogus avatars, these people who claim themselves to be God, they are ex extremely simple. First of all, because they're claiming to be God and they're not. And secondly, because they're doing Vaishnava Parad. They're doing Vishnu Aparad by claiming themselves to be God. And they're doing Vaishnava Aparad by causing so much work to Yamaraj. So, not only them, but all the foolish people who follow them, Yamaraj has to make so much arrangements for them. So in both ways, they're very, very simple. So th this uh, Krishna is explaining you get one result by worshipping me, and you get another result by worshipping the demigods. Then another big misconception, very common in Hindu society, is that everything is one. Ultimately everything is one. I am you, and you are me, and we are all together, sitting on a cornflake, and so on. Everything is just the same. Me and Narayana, and everything is just one. See, you, just, you do bhakti and then later on you will understand that I'm God. Right? Makes sense, doesn't it? Does it? No. It doesn't make any sense at all. Somehow or other people think it's more intelligent to think that you're God than to think you're certainly God. But actually, according to Christian Bhagavad Gita, such people, they are less intelligent. They're not more intelligent. They are less intelligent. Krishna clearly says that those who think that Krishna is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they think that he, like everything else, is produced from some uh, undefined absolute, unmanifest. If you think like that, Krishna says, Abhyaktam vyaktim apanam manyante maam abhudhyaha. Whoever thinks that originally there was some unmanifest absolute and Krishna has come from that, as is a commonly propagated idea, Krishna says people abhudhyaha. They have no brain. Damn fools. Idiots. There are various words. Murha is a common word. So, uh, no brain. Stupid. So that's not, so how can you say they're stupid? They're quoting Shastra, but they're stupid. Krishna says so because they got it all wrong. Just like you may be a, a so-called brilliant mathematician, 
But if you think that one plus one equals three, then you're a fool. Even if, even if you theoretically, you know, calculus and so many things. But if you think that one plus one equals three, then you're a fool. Let's say it's true. You may have a PhD in math, you know, you know, someone might give it to you, you never know. But if you think that one plus one equals three, then you're a fool. You, got to, you may have so much theoretical knowledge, but your practical knowledge of reality doesn't make any sense. It's nonsense. So in the same way, you may be a so-called great Vedic scholar, and you know how to interpret different Vedic sutras according to uh, the rules of Nyaya and Mimans and all these different things. But if we don't understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we are his eternal servants, then we got it all wrong, according to Bhagavad Gita, which is what Krishna says. And that's what we're supposed to understand, because Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all the Shastra, which is spoken by Krishna, who is the Narayana himself. Yasvayam Padmana Bhasyam Mukha Padmana Vinisritam. Bhagavad Gita is directly spoken by Padmanabha, Krishna, from whose lotus, navel, the lotus emanates. So the fact is that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and we are all his eternal servants, as described in these three verses, of which this is the second, the one that we're reading today. So if we can simply understand this, then automatically all misconceptions, demigods, demigod worship, everything is all one, uh, that is automatically, uh, being freed from such misconceptions is all subsumed by this simple understanding that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we are all his eternal servants, and any other idea apart from that is wrong. And it's, uh, some people say, well, you can believe this or you can believe that, and it's all the same and they're all right, but that's not what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, nor does that correspond to uh, reality in any manner that we can conceive of it. If we say that all opinions are the same, it doesn't make any sense anyway, in any way that we can conceive it. Now, my opinion is that one plus one equals three. It's your opinion, but it's damn wrong. You're a fool. You're an idiot. You can believe it if you like, but we, we have to lock you up in the puzzle country. Because you're an idiot, you, know, so you shouldn't be in the, you shouldn't be in living in society by having such wrong ideas. There are certain things which are right and they are correct and true, and certain things which are not true. And you can't say if you say everything you do, everything is all, everything is right, whatever you want to believe. Well, I believe that it's all right for me to stab people to death and take their money. You take you to court. Well. Why did you study the Bible? I heard the Swami said that all opinions are good. So my opinion is I should stab people and take their money. You see, Swami said. And the Swami is a rascal for talking such nonsense. All opinions are good. Why all opinions are good? There is fact. We have to understand what is the fact. That is called satyam. Param Satya, what is the absolute truth? It is not that whatever you think is right. We have got tiny little brains. What do we know? So many times people ask me, what is your opinion about this or that? Immediately I reply, I'm not going to re Immediately I reply, I cannot reply to this. Because what is the use of stating my opinion? What is the, who am I with this tiny little intelligence? With the tiny little experience of this tiny little planet through my limited, highly limited senses. Why should I give my opinion, in my opinion? Who am I to give any opinion? What does it matter what my opinion is? It's sure to be imperfect. So we don't give our opinion. We are not so foolish as to think that our opinion has any value. But we simply state what is given in Shastra, which is Krishna's opinion. And his opinion is worth understanding. Just like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yogi naam api sarve sham mantate naam taratmana shadha vam bhachate yomam same yukta temo mataha. Krishna says, in my opinion, the best of all yogis is he who worships me with full faith. So that is Krishna's opinion. 
That's a fact. What Krishna thinks, that is a fact. What we think, if it's not what Krishna thinks, it means, means it's not a fact, it's not true. So we should know all these things very clearly. Other, and another uh, way in which people avoid Krishna very craftily is to avoid Bhagavad Gita and just listen to stories about Krishna or Krishna Lila without wanting to understand Bhagavad Gita. We'll listen to, oh, there's this story in Mahabharata and there's that story, uh, Krishna Lila, and only story, story, story. But first you have to understand who is Krishna. Otherwise, without understanding who is Krishna, what is his position, what is our position in relation to him as eternal servant, and then we'll hear stories, but actually we won't understand Krishna. Without the clear understanding of who he is, we are certain to misunderstand who is Krishna. We shouldn't try to understand Krishna's personal life without first of all understanding his public life. What is his position? Newspaper Prime Minister Vajpayee dressed in a in a kadi dhoti and uh, he ate for breakfast, he took for breakfast some fruit. Why should we be interested? What, the, what does it matter what he dressed and how? Actually, Prime Minister they don't, but the film stars and the sports stars, you see. Sachin, for breakfast he eats, uh, I don't know what it is, probably better not to say it here. You know, they have this idea that to be strong you have to eat meat, although send Sachin to fight with an elephant who's a vegetarian, see who wins. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, they, in these magazines, I haven't read, but I presume, because these magazines are for nonsense people and they're about nonsense people. So they, they put what these sports stars are eating and how they dress, what fashions they follow. Why should you be interested? You're interested... Why should you be interested what Sachin had for breakfast? You're interested because he's the number one Indian cricketer, which means he's the most expert person in India at hitting a ball with a piece of wood, which is of no value to anyone, but somehow or other they think it's very important because they're fools. So, uh, if someone says, well, you know, I ate at least for breakfast, why don't they put it in the magazine? So I'm sending a report to the newspaper. This morning I had three at least and coconut chutney. But not much chutney because I'm not put too much salt in it. <laughs> so, uh, and then, do you think that they're going to report it in the newspaper? No. Why? Because Sachin is who he is and you are who you are. And he is very important in the minds of foolish people, which means most of the people. And you are not important in anyone's mind for any reason whatsoever. So, first, if someone tells you, you see that Satyan at uh, three at least for breakfast. Oh, really? Uh, yes, uh, Satyan Nene. So another Satyan. Who's that? He's a... Uh, He's a clerk in an office in Bombay. Um, not very interesting. And we said, Sachin had three at least for breakfast. Which said, Sachin? Oh, really? He had three at least for breakfast. Oh, that's really it's very interesting. I have to. Is there more in the newspaper? So we're taking interest because, not because he had the at least, but because of who he is. So in the same way, Krishna is going out with the cows in the morning. Well, if you look out here, you'll probably see some boys taking cows out also. So if we say, well, the mother gave some, uh, some rice and salt, probably they don't eat much else, and chilies, that's probably what they eat for breakfast, not in this. His mother gave him some rice and some salt and some chilies. Hmm. You're all going to come out here and listen to that. If we say that uh, Swamiji will be giving a lecture on what some village boy, he took some cows out and what he had for breakfast. Will anyone be interested? No. 
But if we say that you see Mother Yashoda, she's dressing Krishna, and then she uh, gives him Shukta Shakadi Bhaji Nalita Kushmanda Dali Dalna Dubda Tumbi Dadi Mochakanda. There's a whole list. That's his breakfast. He has a good appetite. <laughs> That's not everything. That's just the first line of the song. Yeah, he has a huge breakfast. And then he goes and he has lunch too. He's God. So, why should we be interested to hear that? Because he is Uttama Purusha Stvanya Paramatmetu Dahrita Yolaka Trayama Visha Vidhatya Vyaya Abhyayam Because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Therefore his Leela is of importance Otherwise many people are dancing Of course they don't dance for a night of Brahma But uh, many people are eating Many people have girlfriends Many people have wives, not 16,100 many wives, but many people are fighting. So all these pastimes of Krishna are described, but they are of value because he is the Supreme Personality of God. And Shino Sukadam Shubadam Babasara, even in this miserable material world, by hearing of Krishna, we become happy on the transcendental platform and our life becomes auspicious. If you hear about what Sachin Tandoka eats for breakfast, you may feel some maya soup, but it will not, that will not be auspicious. That will not elevate our consciousness. By hearing about Krishna, we become elevated beyond the modes of material nature. By hearing about cricket players, bogus incarnations of God, or anyone else, we remain bound in the modes of material nature. So there is a difference. Hearing about Krishna and hearing about anyone else, there is a great difference. If we hear about Krishna or his devotees, we become purified. If we hear about any others, we become putrefied. You know what that word putrefied means? It means you become rotten. You rot away, rotting in this material world. So we should hear about Krishna, but first of all, we have to understand why hearing about Krishna is purifying? Because his position is extraordinary. He is not an ordinary person. If we hear about Krishna, Krishna is going with the cows, he's dancing with the gopis, but we don't clearly understand how he is Paramatma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then we will tend to think that we... it's a nice story, and he's one of the gods. But after all, we're all God, isn't it? We will be subject to these misconceptions. We are prone to be subject to misconceptions because the very reason we're in this material world is because of embracing the misconception that I am not the servant of Krishna. So we are very much prone to accept misconceptions. That is our tendency. Our real tendency is to serve Krishna but now our tendency has become opposite. We have become rascal, so we are attracted to rascal them. Therefore we have to hear from persons who are fixed clearly in understanding what is the actual fact that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And on that platform of understanding that I am his eternal servant, then if we hear about Krishna, that will be very much conducive for getting free from the modes of material nature and being fixed in our constitutional position of ser as servants of Krishna. So yes, we should hear about Krishna Lila, but first we should have a very solid background of understanding who is Krishna? What is my position? I am Anu. He is Vibhu. I am very small. He is very great. He is the controller. I am the servant. The Lord is stating this very clearly here in Bhagavad Gita. Those who are uh, actually inclined to be devotees, they will understand this and accept this. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? No question.
All right, that was a class on Sambandha. What is our relationship with Krishna? Who is Krishna? What is our relationship? And then the next thing we have to come to, Abhideya, which means practical action in Krishna consciousness. Reviving our relationship with Krishna. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhakti Yoga. In Sadhana Bhakti, there are several principles which are vital, which if we don't follow, then we can't advance properly. Of course, we know chanting the holy names, that is essential. But, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, Eva Kevalam means that's the only way. It means if we don't chant the holy name, we can't advance. But there are other things to be done also. For instance, if we chant the holy names, but we don't serve Vaishnavas, then we won't advance very properly. So there are various essential points in Sadhana Bhakti. One point I want to speak about a little bit now is chanting. Harem Nama, Harem Nama, Harem Nama, Eva Kegavam, Kalona, Strevana, Strevana, Strevagatiya, One has to chant the holy names to become purified and situated in Krishna consciousness. It is essential in this Kali Yoga. So we are preaching the chanting of the holy names and we are asking everyone, come forward, chant Hare Krishna, minimum 16 rounds, minimum, and follow these principles. And then there's initiation and then you go on from initiation to advance in love of God. But practically speaking, I'm seeing many devotees, even those who are initiated, they're not they, they're chanting 16 rounds, but exactly what it is, I'm not sure. Because it may not be the Maha Mantra. It may be something resembling the Maha Mantra, but not exactly the Maha Mantra. I've seen many cases. It's supposed to be 16 names and 32 syllables. But often, because you, know, you have to chant 16 rounds and it takes some time, so devotees, they're very intelligent. They have devise a system of chanting with only about 25 syllables. So it becomes quicker. Just like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, like this. So it becomes somewhat quicker. And you get your rounds chanting quicker. But the only problem with this is that you don't make any spiritual advancement. Because you make spiritual advancement by chanting Hare Krishna. And by chanting something else, such as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare you don't make any spiritual advancement because you're not chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So I'm seeing or hearing this is quite prominent, quite widespread. And even devotees are getting initiated and they're promising to chant 16 rounds, but I'm wondering if they're even chanting one round of the Hare Krishna Maha mantra or even one mantra. So, if you want to advance in Krishna consciousness, please consider this very carefully. What are you chanting? You are taking time out every day to chant. So you might as well chant the Maha Mantra and go back to Godhead. Since you are spending so much time, you put your hand in your bead bag and you make some sound. So you might as well chant the Maha Mantra as chant something which vaguely resembles the Maha Mantra. Because by chanting the Maha Mantra, you will get love of Krishna. And by chanting something vaguely resembling the Maha Mantra, you'll get something resembling love of Krishna, but not love of Krishna. So, please take this very seriously. We have to chant clearly Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we do that, and then we go on and we chant that somehow it may become somewhat mechanical, and then we're just going or another thing, uh, there's the almost silent. And nothing heard. That also, it won't give us much benefit. Somehow, in the middle of all that, the name of Krishna might come. Here, now and then. But chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is supposed to be repeated. Chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, again and again. The names are supposed to be repeated. Again and again the names are supposed to be repeated. 
So if we do it just as some kind of duty that, okay, I'll do it, I'll put my hand in my big bag and some sound will come out, then uh, we won't get the benefit of chanting Hare Krishna and we won't advance very nicely. So please take this chanting very seriously. The first thing is that we have to chant clearly. We have, we have to pronounce the names of Krishna very clearly. So please do that and then you can advance in Krishna. And we don't, then we won't. That's all. Hare Krishna.